Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving and today I am starting my Amaryllis in Winter scarf. Well, I started it four days ago, but I've woven and unwoven it several times now and uh, I finally have settled on the correct weaving of it. If you'd like to learn more about what I'm talking about, I did a short little video that you can link to up in the corner that explains my dilemma. Uh, but this is an overshot pattern in four shafts. I actually am weaving it on eight shafts, but it is a four shaft pattern that I just threaded on eight shafts. Um, if you'd like an explanation of how I do that, you can also link to this video. Uh, but this is a uh, overshot pattern. An overshot uh, typically uses uh, a pattern weft and a tabby weft. So the pattern weft is thicker than the tabby weft. The tabby weft is the same size as the warp and it creates a ground cloth that the tabby weft goes over and you can create some cool patterns with just four shafts. In this particular pattern, we are using a 60% silk, 40% wool, um, size 60 four ply for the warp and tabby weft. And we're using a 100% reeled silk for the pattern weft that is about an 8-2 equivalent in size. So let me uh, grab my shuttles here. So to give you an idea of the size of these threads, this is, can you even see that? This is the warp and tabby weft and this is the pattern weft. Hopefully you can see those. Um, so I'm going to be uh, weaving this in an overshot pattern which is set, the warp is set at 28 ends per inch and the weft will be woven at about 20 picks per inch. Now that's 20 picks per inch of each of the tabby weft and the pattern weft. So it's a total of 44 picks per inch. And you can do that because the pattern weft kind of floats on top of the uh, tabby weft and the, the ground cloth that's woven by the tabby weft and the warp. Um, the pattern weft goes from the top to the bottom, but it's tied down by the uh, tabby weft. So it isn't as packed in as it sounds. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are, and you can see I've got uh, my warp tied on. I've got it spread with some uh, eight four scrap cotton, and I'm going to put in my uh, hem for the scarf. Now this will have a twisted fringe um, and it calls for throwing four picks of the tabby weft and then starting the pattern. I'm going to hem stitch the ends. The pattern doesn't call for that, but I'm going to hem stitch here and that will uh, just secure the weft in place uh, while I twist the fringe uh, at the end. I've left about eight or about seven inches I used to tie on, and then I've woven about an inch here. That should give me plenty to do the twisted fringe. So to do a hem stitch, uh, you take and on your first pick, you're going to leave a tail that's about three times as long as your project is wide. And I tend to err on the side of leaving more. Okay. 
And then we're going to throw um, three picks. Now we're going to take a blunt tapestry needle and we're going to thread that tail onto that tapestry needle. And I like to thread it a long ways through there because it tends to work its way shorter and shorter on that tail. and. Um, Come out. Now I'm going to hem stitch this in the same number of bouts as my twisted fringe will be, which is eight. Now I have floating selvages on this, so uh, the first and the last bout will contain nine threads. Because this is slayed at uh, 28 picks per inch in a 12 dent reed, I have slayed it at 223, which makes it a little more challenging to find eight threads in here. However, if I raise one of my tabby sheds, then I can find, I can count out um, four threads more easily. and um, come up with the eight threads. So I can see I've got, oh, there is my, okay, so I am going to count four threads, so, uh, one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to come up right there. So there's my eight threads. So I'm going to go under the warp. I'm going to come up uh, underneath the first pick and I'm going to pull that through. I'm going to come back around and under and come up above that third pick and then pull it tight. Now it'll loosen up but once we get to the next one, it will pull itself tight. We're going to do that again for uh, the next eight picks or eight threads. So right there is my eight. So I'm going to go down um, through my weft or my warp. I'm going to come up. go down through my warp where I came up before, come up where the eight is below my uh, first pick. And now you can see how that pulls that tight in. I'm going to come circle back around, go down through that uh, where we came up on the original pick and up above the third pick and then we can tighten it up. So we just keep doing that. We count out our four threads. And sometimes it kind of hooks into each other so it kind of work its way through. Get So this will just be a nice, kind of lacy area between the knot and the twisted fringe. And I have a little knot in my weft. Alright. So working with yarn that is this fine, I have a set of uh, very fine tweezers that I can use to kind of pull this part again. 
There we go. So if you get a knot, don't just start tugging at it. Just relax and make sure that you know which way it's supposed to be going. Okay, so now for this last one, uh, since you can't really go above or below the where you have um, woven your picks, you just kind of have to fake it. So we come out at the end, and then I like to go over the thread that is uh, we're, it's out there waiting, pull it tight. And then I come back around and go th through the loop. There we go. And that will cinch it up. And it will also, so this is the tail that's going to be included in our fringe. It will also uh, direct that tail down towards the fringe. Now, I have way more thread than I needed, but it's easier to work with a long thread than get down here to the end and you've got like this much thread to work with. Um, so I always err on the side of having too much. So now we can go ahead and start our uh, pattern. We have overshot. Uh, when you look at the treadling on the draft, you will typically only see the pattern picks. The tabby picks are assumed. I am using a treadle tracker, uh, so you will see me reach up uh, to my castle every four, well, actually every eight picks because I have to do four pattern picks and four tabby picks for each um, track that is on my screen. So we're going to start off with uh, the final pick, the fourth pick of our um, hem allowance. And then we're going to start in with the uh, pattern picks. So my first pattern pick is four. So I take my pattern weft and I like to start at my, my um, shuttles. When I work with two shuttles, I like to start them from opposite sides. So this one is starting from the right. So we're going to start from the left for this. And I'm going to bring that down and I'm not going to beat this in real hard. Uh, remember, I am looking for around 20 picks per inch of each of the pattern and tabby treadles. So now I'm going to tuck my tail, but because this is a fairly thick yarn, I want to uh, split the ply of my pattern yarn. So I pull it out back to the point where I would normally have tucked my tail. I unply um, the twist, or untwist the plies, and then I separate those two plies. One of them I will leave, the other one, I will take back through the shed, around my floating salvage, back through the shed, the same shed again, and I go uh, beyond the thread where I took it out. So the warp thread where I took it out is right here. This ply is on the left of that. 
this ply is on the right of it. But basically, you're doing this with a thread here in the middle. It just keeps them uh, from kind of flopping in the wind, as it were. All right, so there's my first pattern pick. Now I'm going to do my first tabby pick. My next pattern pick is Treadle One. And then I do my alternate tabby pick. Now I have my treadling set up uh, to help make it a little bit easier. All of my pattern picks I'm using my left foot because basically we're going one, two, three, four, three, two, one. Um, and we're doing re some repeats of each of the one of those, but uh, they're all on my left foot. My right foot is doing the tabby picks. I have my left foot or my right foot. If I'm doing the right tabby, it's to the right. If I'm doing the left tabby, it's to the left. And I'm throwing my shuttle towards my foot. So I know if I'm doing a right tabby, I'm throwing from left to right. If I'm doing a left tabby, I'm throwing right to left. This way, if I find myself throwing my shuttle tabby, from right to left, but my foot is on the right treadle, I know that I'm wrong and I need to stop and find out why. So those are just some of the little tricks that you do when you are weaving. So the next pattern pick is one. And And I think I need to be a little bit harder. I think I need to tighten up my, oh yes, there we go, that's better. <clears throat> All right, so two. And I advance my tracker to two again. Left tabby. Right tabby. And they tend to get caught on the apron strings. Three again. Left tabby. Four. <clears throat> right tabby. Four 
four again for the third time. And right tabby. Okay. That is 10 picks of each. So I am going to measure now to make sure that my beet is stain correct. So I'm a little over a half an inch. Uh, my first few picks here were a little loose. I knew that, um, so I had adjusted it in. So um, I am going to keep up with the current beat that I have, and uh, I will measure in another uh, 10 picks. I'm going to go ahead and measure again. Um, I went a little bit beyond where I was supposed to measure, but um, let's see, four. So if I'm at 20, that's here. So I'm a little bit over, so I'm, but I can see that this is, this is the, I believe that this is the density that I want. I know that this is going to shrink up and pull in based on my samples. So I think that this beat is going to be uh, what I want. So we'll just continue on. So there we have the first little bit, and we'll cut off, making sure not to cut our fringe tail, and cut off that little bit, and uh, you can start, start to see the pattern emerging. Um, it will be more apparent once we get it wet finished, but uh, I really like the way it looks and we'll continue weaving on. So I thought it would be fun for you to be able to see the treadling at the same time that I'm weaving. I found it a little challenging to have the camera behind my legs and still treadle, but hopefully you can see that for every tabby pick I throw, that's the end feed shuttle, I'm alternating between the two tabby treadles, the ones labeled five and six, with my right foot. And I'm pushing the pattern treadles, labeled one through four, with my left foot. This makes it easier to keep track of which tabby pick I'm on and also which pattern pick I'm on. Notice I don't move my foot to the next treadle until I'm actually ready to push that treadle. This way, if I get interrupted or notice a problem, I can always look and see what treadle I was pushing and correct the problem if necessary. Also, notice I beat on an open shed and change sheds while the beater is still at the fell line. This helps keep my selvages neat without excessive drying.
right, we finished up the last uh, towel and that was the white on white. And now I'm going to do the same exact pattern, but I'm going to use a colored um, pattern weft. So I needed to space uh, 16 inches for the fringe, eight inches for the first scarf, eight inches for the second scarf. And I used uh, just some slats of uh, cardboard that I've cut into one inch strips. Um, I've used these for several different projects uh, and they work really well. And I just put them in a plain weave shed and then I uh, hem stitched. I threw my three picks, I hem stitched and then I threw that fourth pick and I've got the tail of my hem stitching here so that I can incorporate it into my fringe when I am done. All right, so as you can see, I have uh, started the second scarf and I'm using a um, dark green uh, wool that is quite fine. It's probably a little bit finer than the silk that I was using, but I like the look of it. And I just wanted to demonstrate the efficiency of managing two shuttles. Because if you're trying to pick up one shuttle with one hand and pass it to the other hand, um, it can get uh, inefficient to weave. It takes a long time. And when you're doing, you know, this is probably going to end up being, oh, a couple thousand picks long. So um, I want to be efficient as possible. So what I'm doing is <clears throat> I've got, the white will always live on the top. The green will always live on the bottom. And then I'm going to uh, look at how my hands pick up the shuttle. So my left hand is going to pick up this shuttle. It's going to pass it to my right hand, go under the floating salvage. And then I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to grab my shuttle with the right hand, beat this, change my shed, and pass from right to left. I'm going to put this one down, beat, and then change hands on the beater because I am going to pick up this shuttle with my right hand and I push the beater bar back. And I just keep doing that. When I first started weaving this project, I was not being as efficient and it took me quite some time to weave it off and uh, and sometime before I figured out this process. And really that's what you need to do. And I need to not talk while I'm weaving because I'm doing the wrong treadles. <clears throat> All right, there we go. <clears throat> So originally I was oops, picked up with the wrong hand. <clears throat> I would uh, put this one down and because I was beating with my right hand, I would pick this shuttle up, push back and then transfer over. But that's an inefficient use of my hands. So um, I learned that if I switched the hand that was pushing the beater bar back, that was a more efficient 
use of my energy. <clears throat> it did, doesn't take as long and I don't really have to think about it. Um, So if you develop these little tricks, um, it can make it easier to weave faster. <laughs> And sometimes I still try and grab it with the wrong hand, but um, I've kind of developed a muscle memory now. So I finally gotten to the last pick of the pattern weft and I just cut it and tuck the tail. Then I throw four picks of the tabby weft, leaving a tail that's three times the width of the warp, like we did at the beginning of the scarf. I hem stitch in groups of eight and it's ready to come off the loom and get the fringes twisted. So we finally have our Amaryllis in Winter scarf off the loom. Here is the one as the pattern calls for with the white uh, reeled silk as the pattern weft and the silk and wool as the tabby weft. Now this has a different looking pattern on either side. I'm hoping you can see that. So this side is the side that was weaving face up and I like this uh, pattern. This I believe is what the pattern author was talking about when she said it looks like amaryllis flowers which this is was woven on the downside so I didn't really see it until I could see the underside. It uh, I wove it at 72 inches on the loom. When I got it off the loom, it ended up being about 70 inches. And after wet finishing, it is a 66 inches. So it did shrink a bit, but it has a nice long twisted fringe on it. And uh, it is, it ended up being about nine and three quarter inches wide. It started off before I wet finished it, it was 10 and an eighth inches wide. So this one turned out really nice. I love the drape of it. Uh, you can see it's nice and drapey. Uh, I'm glad that I changed the beat because the beat that was called for in the pattern was way too loose. Um, so I'm glad that I changed that. And I'm also glad that I didn't go with what Overshot normally would call for at uh, 22 ends per inch each of the pattern and the tabby weft. I think that would have been too stiff. So the downside of doing it that way was I did not have enough weft for two scarves of the reeled silk. So what I had done was I got a uh, green wool and I used the rest of the weft or warp and created this scarf. Now I really like the color 
um, because you can see uh, the pattern a lot better. So again, this is the uh, top side, the side that was weaving up. And then this is the back side, the one that was weaving on the bottom. I think that's correct. I could be backwards, <laughs> but it's really a lot different than the other scarf. Uh, it looks a lot different. It's the exact same pattern. My husband didn't believe me when I told him that, when I showed it to him. Um, this uh, I wove at about 70 inches on the loom. It came off the loom. It was about 69 inches. It shrunk down to about 66 inches, I think. 65 inches. Um, so it was a little bit shorter, tiny, tiny bit. And I did a little bit different thing with the fringe. And I'll show you that here. So instead of just a plain twisted fringe, I took each of the eight threads. I split that in two. And so that left me four threads. I twisted uh, two threads in each um, leg and created uh, basically two twisted fringes out of each of the eight instead of one twisted fringe. And then I took that and I uh, tied it in a lattice work. So you can see that. Um, I just think it looks really nice and lacy. Uh, so the fringes on both of these are about five inches um, so it they're nice and long and I like a nice long scarf so there you go yeah there so I hope you enjoyed watching me weave these two scarves I sure enjoyed making them and I learned a lot about overshot if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. These both will be on my Etsy site, so if you want to head over there and take a look at them um, and use the code YouTube24, you can get 20% off. Thanks for watching and happy weaving!